Welcome to Inside South Union Township here on the South Union Township Network. Inside South Union Township brought you as a joint cooperative venture featuring Township Supervisors Bob Schiffbauer, Rick Fernan and Jason Scott, Atlantic Broadband Cable, Armstrong Cable, and our friends at CUTV, including Gary Smith. We're continuing our, pro our COVID-19 program series here today on the coronavirus and joining us here via Zoom meeting. And the first time we've done this here on the South Union Township Network, we're very happy to have along with us the president of California University of Pennsylvania, President Geraldine Jones. And President Jones, thank you for taking the time to join us. Thank you, my pleasure to do so, yes. Certainly nice to talk with you. And before we get started on some of the changes at California University of Pennsylvania, give us a little bit of background information about yourself. Sure, uh, let's see, I'm a lifelong resident of uh, uh, Fayette County, Pennsylvania, uh, and I, um, graduated from the Brownsville area high school and I've been at the university here for uh, 40, 46 years at the university. I started as a faculty member and had an opportunity to move into the administrative ranks about 22 years ago as an associate dean for the College of Education and Human Services and then as the dean of the College of Education and Human Services provost and then uh, in the current role now as president of the uh, university. I also taught in the public school system in Fayette County in the Albert Gallatin School District for a few years in the early 70s. I actually saw that when reading your bio, and that's actually where you started your education career? Yes, absolutely, and it was a wonderful experience. It, I, I taught uh, second grade in the Albert Gallatin School District at the Deferred uh, Sweeney Elementary School, yes. Well, certainly a lot going on as far as the coronavirus and the COVID-19 pandemic, and I'm sure you've been pretty busy at Cal U as well, handling all of the changes. Uh, yes, we have, and I'll tell you what, we have a wonderful staff that's in place making the uh, kind of uh, change, uh, change needed because this came upon us so quickly. And as I've shared with all of Cabinet and with all of our uh, university employees and our students at the campus, uh, the health and safety of our students and our employees is our number one priority. And so all things that we do are taken into consideration the health and safety of all of our employees. Yes. Explain the current status right now as far as what California University of Pennsylvania is doing to deal with everything that's gone on so far. Sure. Um, uh, let's see, March 17th, we moved into uh, the remote uh, phase of uh, working uh, to do all the things with coronavirus. And on March 17th, all of our employees started working remotely. Prior to that, uh, our students uh, were on spring break when all of this uh, began. And so we extended our spring break by an additional week. So our students were on a two week uh, semester break while we transitioned all of our courses from that face-to-face -face environment to an online environment. One good thing uh, that, that helped uh, us is California, we have been offering online courses for uh, more than a decade. So a large number of our faculty were already teaching in the online environment with, with students both at the undergraduate level and at the graduate level for our programs. So we gave our faculty members a two-week period of time to transition those face-to-face -face courses they were teaching to the online environment too, so that we were able to have a smooth uh, transition for our students who may not have taken a first of, uh, had uh, ever had an uh, online course, and we allowed that time to transition. And for the students who were already um, in the online environment, there was no break in their, uh, their course schedule at, at all. And, and considering well, how fast all this happened, I think you guys really did a great job getting things up and, and going as quickly as you did. And that happens because of the wonderful faculty uh, and the dedication and commitment of our faculty who uh, took very seriously the, the changing of the format in that short period of time, and a lot of support staff in making uh, that happen. So I was very pleased with how everyone embraced that change because we were all doing it so that we would be able to have uh, the least disruption to our spring semester for our students so that our students could still move forward to progressing toward their degree. Those students who are going to graduate in May and for those students who are uh, uh, as a freshman, sophomore, junior, being able to keep them moving forward to uh, uh, and have progress as well. Yes. How much of a challenge was it for some of the students maybe staying at campus housing? 
Our students who were in campus housing, again, with our student affairs team and others on campus, we had a, uh, a plan in place to help them move uh, out of the residence halls. For us, as you heard me say a few minutes ago, our students were on spring break when this started. So our students uh, didn't necessarily have the time to return back to campus uh, uh, or not return back to campus, but they were away from campus when this happened. So we were notifying the students not to return back for that two week period of time. And then we scheduled time for them to return when we would have protocols in place to protect again, their safety when they were coming to move uh, their belongings out of the uh, residence halls. So all of our students were able to move out of the residence halls and then um, uh, start uh, uh, beginning to prepare for taking their coursework for the remainder of the spring semester online, totally online. So as far as the future is concerned, obviously the rest of this semester is going to be online. What are your plans for some of the graduating seniors for this year as far as graduation is concerned? And what do you have planned for the summer semester, which I'm sure will be starting soon as well? Well, for the first thing, our students, they will graduate in May. We will not have our uh, traditional commencement ceremony when everyone is in cap and gown and and in, in May, we always uh, uh, walk through campus down to the convocation for the uh, ceremony. Uh, we will not have a, a ceremony that way, but what I'm in the, uh, what we're doing, I have a video that one video I've already sent out to all of our students, letting them know what our plans are to help celebrate that special time in their lives and, and for their families uh, as well. And uh, I'm going to be doing another video and, and opening up all the, the um, uh, the things that we're going to provide the students to help them celebrate their uh, graduation at home. Uh, so there's going to be a box of materials they're going to uh, receive to celebrate that at home. And then for the um, students who are graduating in December, we will invite all of those May graduates to the commencement ceremony so that they still have an opportunity to uh, have their cap and gown and invite their family and loved ones to see them uh, walk across the stage and earn their uh, degree. And that would certainly be nice because obviously situations like that don't happen that much to be able to at least be able to celebrate for some of those uh, graduating seniors is still going to be nice. I'm sure a lot will want to get back to campus in December for those ceremonies. And as disappointed as those uh, as our students are that they are not able to celebrate uh, commencement in the traditional setting, so are all of us at the university. That's something that we look forward to as well. So realizing that we are trying to put things in place that will help them still have wonderful memories of this special day in their life of earning their uh, college uh, degree. So we take that very seriously. How about the summer semester? Summer semester, uh, because we're following all of the, um, of the protocols from the governor's office and from the chancellor's office, we will have all of our courses this summer online. We will not have any face-to-face -face courses on, online uh, this summer. But for California, for these last so many years, uh, for the most part, all of our courses were offered online, and now, so it won't be that much of a change for our uh, for our students. And for those students who are um, from other universities, if they have to be home in the summer and they want to take some on online courses, they would be able to do that with us here as well. But again, everything revolves around the safety and health of our our students, our faculty, and staff, and I can't stress that enough. And of course, for all of your student athletes up, up out there as well, the entire spring semester got shut down as far as athletics were concerned or actually suspended in, in mid-March. I did see the NCAA offering an extra year of eligibility for some of those students that were impacted by uh, the coronavirus and uh, the spring sports getting shut down. So that'll be good for some of your student athletes getting that extra year of eligibility and at the same time being able to continue their academic career as well. And, and yes, and working with our coaches, they, they will be doing all of that because, you know, uh, we're division two and I always say student athlete, student being first. And so we want our students to be able to, you know, to uh, earn their degrees, graduate and still be a part of uh, being a student athlete on our campus. And so our coaches are working closely with our students to keep them uh, involved as they can and following all the rules and regulations that uh, are tied to NCAA. So, yes. You mentioned staying connected with your students. You mentioned a number of videos that you're sending out. What else are you doing as far as outreach just to make sure that your current group of students knows what's going on, especially with them taking classes online? 
Sure, a number, you know, we have the six divisions here at the uh, university and our student affairs division, they did a, uh, a video uh, not too awfully long ago. And while everyone is working remotely, they were able to put this video together from every individual in student affairs and then to place that out on the uh, uh, Twitter for our students to observe that way, keeping them involved uh, and engaged. In academics, um, some of the things we've been doing uh, there is um, uh, making sure our students are getting all of the information that they need. We have a, a website there so that we can address the questions and concerns that they have. And those, those uh, questions and concerns are answered uh, you know, uh, via our uh, web. In career services, you know, when you have challenges put in front of you, as they say, uh, uh, opportunity is often found in the middle of a dilemma. So some things that we are doing and with our career services, they're connecting with students and employers through virtual recruitment sessions. So about 50 employers are holding uh, virtual meetings with students to, to explain what jobs are available, the skills that are needed. And this is being done uh, and organized cooperatively with uh, four of our other system universities. So that's what we're doing with uh, career services. So our students who are graduating will still be able to uh, uh, work with career services in finding those uh, uh, career positions that they are uh, seeking. A lot of the, oh, oh, I was going to mention it as well. How about the outreach to some of the incoming freshmen? I would have to think if you're starting college, certainly a tough time right now, considering that everything's going on and everyone talks about the new normal out there as well. But you're graduating high school and, and you look at these graduating seniors, a lot of them didn't have an opportunity to have their prom, have their normal high school graduation, and then get us now coming up in the fall of 2020 and going to college for the first time I think really a lot to handle what are you doing to reach out to them because I think it has to be a crazy time in their lives as well and you know what and, and I'll talk about this uh, by saying uh, I'm affected by that as well because I have an 18 year old granddaughter who is graduating this year from wow. high school from uh, from the Laurel Highlands uh, school district and so the all of those students you know, my heart goes out to all of those students they plan for their uh, graduation, they plan for the prom and all of the things that you do in that senior year that makes it uh, exciting. So some of the things that uh, we are doing with our uh, students is holding online events with that entering uh, freshman class. Uh, in fact, today we are holding an on, we are holding our first virtual open house. Nice, so nice. Our students are able to still be connected to the university. Our uh, admissions team is there. So this, this, this virtual uh, setting will really help them to see our um, campus, address the questions, concerns that they have, and uh, allow them to share their, their experiences. And a lot of this will go out on Facebook. So we are um, still doing things that are keeping us connected with our um, uh, students who will join us here in the fall. And we're excited and we wanna be prepared and ready for those students in the fall. Yes. You mentioned earlier that every dark cloud sometimes has a silver lining. And one of those obviously has been this expansion of online services. Do you expect to maybe see these online classes continuing to grow in future years just because of everything that's happened here over the last couple of weeks, the last couple of months? You know, for us in California, as I said a little while ago, we've been offering online uh, programs for more than a decade now, fully 100% online programs. So. I, I, I want to believe that we're going to see more uh, individuals wanting uh, to do that because we're not sh quite sure no one is at this point in time when we will be able to return back to uh, a more normal way of doing things. And even when we do, it will be a new normal. So for uh, online courses, it's going to allow uh, students to um, continue their education while we're working through all the, the, the effects of uh, of the uh, COVID-19 uh, virus. So. Have you started to put a plan in place? Because you mentioned at some point we're going to get back to a new normal. We all hope it's sooner rather than later. But I'm sure, as you said, some adaptions might have to take place. Obviously, the hot topic's been social distancing, and, and we'll see how that pans out over the next couple of months as well. But if you do get back to having in-person classes, have you started to develop a little bit of a game plan there as far as what might have to happen down the road to, to get back to some sense of normalcy here over the next couple of months? Yes, with, uh, with my uh, cabinet, we meet and talk often about that and, and everything is remotely uh, again. And we are making those plans uh, for the return of face-to-face -face classes in the fall. 
we're looking at if we have to do a hybrid, maybe it's face to face and it's and it's online. So there's a lot of additional planning that has to take place. But one thing for sure, we'll be prepared and ready for our students when the fall semester begins, whether it's a return to full face to face or mixture of the two. And with the social distancing, that's going to be very important too with uh, uh, our classroom size and how we're doing that. And there's many ways to, to accomplish that. And uh, I was just on a, uh, uh, a call with my uh, uh, provost uh, right before this meeting here. And we're talking about some of those um, uh, ways of um, uh, how we will offer the courses in the fall. And of course, California State University, Cal California University of Pennsylvania State School, and I'm sure this whole coronavirus crisis has brought forth a number of financial challenges for both the university and I'm sure for a lot of the students and, and parents that have uh, students enrolled as well. From a university standpoint, are you worried at all about maybe the loss of some state funding down the road as well with some of the challenges? And, and also for some of the incoming students, are, are there some plans in place to maybe allow uh, higher education to be more affordable, more, more payment plans for some of the incoming students? Because everybody's going through, I think, a, a tough financial time right now. And those are things that we are always uh, mindful of and wanting to be able to provide uh, the be a quality education at the most affordable prices that way and the scholarship opportunities that we have for our uh, students. And as you said, we are a state-owned university, so setting the, uh, uh, the tuition and all of that is set by our Board of Governors, and they work with the, uh, uh, with the legislature on that. And I'm sure every Pennsylvanian wants what's best for their uh, students, so we're going to have some things in place to assist our students so that they will still be able to uh, attend college uh, have the, uh, the finances available for, for doing that and looking at those uh, uh, costs and not knowing uh, right now what all those costs will be because uh, the budget hasn't been, been set for that uh, yet. Yes. You mentioned your website, I think, being a great resource as well for updated mm -hmm. COVID-19 information as far as how it's relating to everything. I had an opportunity to log on earlier on today. And I think you guys have a great layout there as far as information as far as what's going to be happening here over the next couple of weeks, what you've done to make the adaptions already. And I think that continued outreach certainly is uh, helpful for your current students and prospective students as well. Communication is key. Communication is key at any time and especially during this time. So when we have the website there and the information goes out, the videos that I may be doing or other individuals on campus, and we do that so that our students know that uh, if they have a question or a concern, they can email and get that answer. I get a number of uh, emails from the, uh, the students as well. And either I answer those questions or I move it to the particular uh, vice presidential area who will provide that information that that student needs. And we try to, to uh, uh, address those questions very quickly that students and their parents are having regarding uh, this. Because we know, they're, we know they're a little anxious and concerned. And if we can answer their question and let them know that we are looking to resolve their their issues, that goes a long way. Because again, as I've shared with everyone, there's life after coronavirus, and we want to be in a good place uh, to still work and, uh, and make our students um, um, have the most uh, appropriate experience at our, at our university. It's good to see how hands-on you are as well, because at a lot of bigger institutions, as you mentioned, a, a Division II school, you have a pretty big student enrollment as well. To be able to have a president reaching out and talking to students directly, I think really says a lot for the school. And you know what? And that's something that we need to do. And again, the questions, the concerns that our students have, I want to be able to answer those uh, questions. And it helps keep me tied uh, to knowing what their concerns are that way. And so I can't think of any better use of my time at this time than to uh, still work with our students and address uh, the concerns that our, uh, our, our students have. And I think it's important that that, that be done. Yeah. I also, I also want to mention one of the gems I think you have on campus is your convocation center, a great athletic facility. I know you try to use it as much as you can. How has this coronavirus pandemic and COVID-19 affected the convocation center, some of the events you might have scheduled there? And, and what are your plans in terms of social distancing down the road, depending on how this all shakes out with, uh, with your facility there? Well, right now, the Convocation Center, like every other building on campus, has been shuttered. So events that were scheduled there 
uh, the, uh, the event staff, they contacted those uh, organizations that were, have, were to have events on campus, that, to, to, that they're rescheduling those events because nothing is happening uh, now more over the summer. So we're hopeful that things will return in, in the fall semester. So we've, we've um, rescheduled some of those events when we can. That's where we hold our commencement ceremony. So, uh, you know, commencement isn't happening. Uh, with our athletics, athletic events happen in that building, but right now the building is uh, is shuttered due, due to uh, coronavirus and not uh, no activities are occurring in, in the facility right now. But we will be um, uh, ready when school resumes in a face-to-face -face environment to utilize that beautiful, beautiful facility there. For sure, for sure. We talked about the virtual open house you mentioned you have going on today, and not only we do have some high school seniors, we're going to have a lot of high school sophomores and juniors looking at where they might want to attend school in the next couple of years. Do you anticipate continuing a lot of those virtual tours over the next couple of months, depending on how things shake out? And if you had an opportunity to, to talk to some of those high school students, tell us some reasons why that they should consider attending California University of Pennsylvania. California is a wonderful state system university. We've been here since 1852. We have high quality programs, outstanding, wonderful faculty. We have accredited programs and it's a good institution to uh, come and our graduates do well after earning their degree from the uh, university. And when we are talking to those juniors and seniors, as we will do uh, virtual events for those individuals uh, as well, we are uh, providing the kinds of information that they need at this point in time as well through that uh, uh, virtual uh, piece. We even have some students who, with their families, they're driving on campus, not getting out of the car, but they're driving on campus so they still have an opportunity to see what our campus looks like. And with our admissions team, they're able to have a conversation with them via, you know, via technology and with the phone. So we are st still keeping them involved uh, during this uh, point in time and letting them know that their university will be here for them, whether it's in a face-to-face -face environment, whether it's in an online environment, or a mixture of the uh, two. This is a place where they would receive an, an excellent, outstanding uh, uh, education. And we're looking for the time when everybody is returning back to campus. Is there anything that students need to do to enroll for any of those virtual tours, or is it, sim is it simple as just going on your website? Information is still going out. Our enrollment management team is still sending out information to the students because we can still send things via mail. We have the, um, uh, the electronic means of getting information to our students. And so, so they're, they're, they're able to get the information that they need to sign up for those, those events and they can still sign up and register for those events. In fact, you know, one of those uh, virtual open house days uh, is occurring on campus uh, today and we've had over and my understanding was, I think there's over 200 individuals who are participating in that. That's great. And, That's great. Yes, and and something else too. When we have uh, when we have our face-to-face -face, uh, tours of campus, many students outside the area, outside of the state, will attend those events. And then there are many students who are unable to travel that distance. They still may choose to come to California in the fall, but not having had the opportunity for that type of a visit. We are getting more students who are outside the state outside the country who are signing up for our virtual uh, tours. So there's, there's good to be had at this, at this time with the way that our enrollment management team is setting up those uh, virtual tours for, for everyone to have an opportunity to see the uh, university. Before we let you go, we also, speaking on behalf of South Union Township, I have to say it's been great to have such a positive relationship with the university over the years. Uh, Gary Smith from your uh, communications department. You guys have such a wonderful TV station down there as well, educating the uh, future of the communication industry. Uh, Gary's been great to work with, and we appreciate you working with the township as well, being able to showcase a lot of our community programs as well on CU TV. And we appreciate doing that too, because we are a university, but we also want to be involved with the community, and we see that as part of something that we should be doing. And Gary Smith, we talk about Gary Smith, he's one outstanding. Uh, individual. And when uh, the South Union Township Supervisors, um, Bob Schiffbar reached out and wanted to know would we be able to um, uh, air the showing when they were doing the uh, testing for coronavirus, when I contacted Gary Smith, 
he said his pleasure to do so. And I know he did a lot of work in making uh, that happen. And uh, that's just, he's just representative of the many, many uh, quality individuals that we have here on, uh, uh, on, on our campus and how we want to be involved with the community and what makes this place so special, what makes students want to come to this university to earn their degree and graduate and then return back uh, to help uh, throughout the time. And something else I wanted to share too. Sure. There have been a number with alumni events, even our alumni are engaged and involved. With our alumni um, uh, team, they've been hosting virtual events that way. So we've been trying to keep our alumni involved uh, during this time as well, because they care a lot about their university as well. And you have a pretty big alumni base. What's actually your current enrollment there right now? Our, our, our current student enrollment? So we are right. just, we're about 6,800 uh, total students. That's about, pretty strong. Yes, and about 2,000 of those students are already online who take uh, coursework 100% online. And then at commencement time, you hear, we have uh, 2,000 um, online students. Many of those students will travel to campus to walk across the stage uh, to uh, uh, receive their degree on that uh, time. And what do you, yes, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, when we have our alumni events, what I especially love when I'm traveling around the country where we have large pockets of alumni, online students attend those alumni events. And that tells us the wonderful connection we are making with those students, even though they are taking all of their coursework online. They feel very connected to their, their university, their alma mater. What do you approximate your uh, alumni is as far as uh, living alumni in the United States? We have about 54,000 living alumni. Living, nice. living throughout the country, yes. Very solid. President Geraldine Jones, appreciate you taking the time to join us. It's been uh, nice to catch up with you here on the South Union Township Network. Thank you, Brian, I, I've enjoyed, yes. In, Inside South Union Township has been a joint cooperative venture featuring Township Supervisors Bob Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon and Jason Scott, Atlantic Broadband Cable, Armstrong Cable, and of course our friends at CUTV, including Gary Smith. For Jerry Dupe and, Doc, and uh, President Geraldine Jones, this is Brian Morozak. Have a great day and please stay safe out there.